proprioceptive system. So it's another movement system, but it provides information about where our bodies are in space and how our body parts are moving. So the, the receptors reside in the muscles, joints, tendons, and deep tissue of our skin. So instead of having two isolated organs, the proprioceptive system is spread out throughout our body. We've got nerve endings everywhere. So I can stand here with my eyes closed and I can feel where my arms are lying. So I can extend my arm. I can even reach for the computer because I know where my body is in space. I know where my fingers are in space. So I can close my eyes and do that if my proprioceptive system is not working well. All of those things can be a challenge. So it's again important for the development of posture because if we're not getting good feedback from our body, it's going to be really hard for us to activate the right muscles and correct our posture, right? Also again, important for motor phase. If you don't know where your body is in space academically, you're going to have difficulty navigating your environment and moving your body um, adequately. It's very important for sensory and emotional regulation. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot to be said with that, and I'm going to go into that a little bit more in the presentation. But basically, the proprioceptive system, uh, proprioceptive system is one of the sensory systems that is almost always regulated. So where the other sensory systems, you can get children that can be overstimulated, so let's say tactile. Some children might be very sensitive to touch, or adults might be very sensitive to touch, and others need more touch input, um, but they can be sensitive to it. So, if, like for example, I'm tactile because if you touch me on the back of the neck, I'm going to go, like, oh, I'm going to have a little bit of a response, and then if you're like turning around, I'm going to just back off, right? But the proprioceptive system don't have that effect. Any proprioceptive input seems to be regulating for the system. So it's our safe system. If you're trying to either calm a class down or wake a class up, you can use this type of sensory information very, very well. Um, graded movement, so also if you don't, if, you, if your proprioceptive system isn't working, it's really hard to control your muscle contractions, how hard or how soft you are contracting your muscles. So, you know, I might push really hard with my pen or my pencil, easily break toys, spoil things when I'm toy drawing, that sort of thing. Um, so why do we look at sensory uh, systems and sensory processing. When you look at the pyramid of development, um, or the hypothesized pyramid of development, we have a few levels of importance, right? Right at our foundation, we need good diet, we need good sleep, and we good need, need good general health. If any of those blocks are shaky, we're going to have issues with everything on the top, right? So everybody sort of knows, a child with no sleep is a grumpy child, they're not going to be able to learn, they're not going to be able to concentrate. The next level we look at are the senses. Anything sort of shaky or not processing information adequately there, we're going to have difficulties with the next level, which is your postural security, your body awareness, motor planning, attention span, activity level, muscle tone, etc., etc. We need these skills to be well consolidated to move to the next level and get our perceptual motor skills right. And then the same with the next level. If you've got a shaky block somewhere, let's say now vestibular proprioception over here is a problem for a child. And by problem, I mean not somebody who necessarily needs to have a diagnosis or go see an OT, just somebody who has difficulty processing that information compared to their peers. We all have different sensory profiles. We're not broken, we're just different. So if somebody's got some challenges processing that information, it will affect their body awareness, their muscle tone, their balance, their activity level, their attention span, their motor planning. So then the eye movement will be uh, uh, a problem, eye-hand coordination will be a problem, um, attention sense function to be a problem, postural adjustment to be a problem, and so we go up. So any issues down here are going to affect the issues at the top. So we really need, need to consider these bottom levels as teachers and as parents. 